Business Weekly brought to you by KCB. KCB making the difference. Ahead on this week's program, the goal of achieving low interest rates and lending remains elusive in the Kenyan economy, stifling business growth, employment creation and economic activity. We make a case for policy innovativeness that could steer the economy away from an environment of double-digit lending rates and into a path of steady growth. Good evening and welcome to this edition of KTN Business Weekly. I'm Larry Medawa. Although the central bank appears to have employed its entire arsenal of economic policy tools, including moral suasion to have lenders lower their rates, a majority of Kenyans, especially small businesses and individuals, remain excluded from the credit market. In fact, after a series of reductions in the cash reserve ratio and the central bank rate, only the rate at which banks lend to each other has significantly come down. This now implies that was need to look into more innovative ways of bringing the cost of credit to individuals and businesses down. Lending rates or the cost of credit is a critical factor in the attainment of sustainable economic growth, inevitably featuring prominently in speeches by the two most powerful figures in Kenya, the president, himself an economist, and the prime minister whose function is to coordinate and supervise all government functions. We must take policy initiatives that will reduce and maintain low interest rates. Today I want to make an appeal to the banks to lower the interest rates. But the debate that also features prominently in other business and economic cycles is also a frustrating one. Despite repeated calls by the President, the Prime Minister and the Central Bank of Kenya, lending rates are yet to meaningfully calm down and, and a majority of Kenyans who would otherwise be playing their part in wealth creation and national building are totally excluded from the formal credit market. The area received particular attention with the ascension to power of the NAC administration in 2003 and gains made are partly credited for the economic upturn that has been experienced since. The target of low interest rates to kickstart an economy has also been very deliberately explored following the 2007-2008 post-election violence, the central bank employing its policy tools including the cash reserve ratio, the central bank rate and moral suasion. The cash reserve ratio is the proportion of the deposits that commercial banks are required to place to the CBK and currently stands at 4.5%. The central bank rate is really the lending rate by the lender of last resort, the CBK itself, while moral suasion is an induction tool, essentially the central bank pricking on the conscience of commercial banks to effect certain policy decisions. In the 14 months between November 2008 and December 2009, the central bank consistently reduced the central bank rate, shedding in excess of 100 basis points within the period, from a high of 9.25% mid-2008 to 7% at the end of 2009, a level that has since been maintained. The cash reserve ratio has also been dropped from 5%, besides endless requests to banks in moral suasion to reduce their rates, but so far without tangible results. Commercial banks tend to compare that similar tenure product that the central bank issues for which banks lend money to the government, they use that as a benchmark on which you can actually then lend to a customer. So if the government is borrowing from uh, commercial banks at 13%, for a 15 year, there's no reason why you should lend to a, a corporate or an individual customer at below that, because government is risk free and so on and so forth. So the issue of the CBR then disappears out of the window. High interest rates on lending have negative effects on business growth, employment and economic activity, a fact not lost to the Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee. The team charged with implementing economic policy tools aimed at maintaining low and stable prices, including interest rates and the level of inflation. With a very low level of credit expansion, the economy was flat. With a, a good, strong credit expansion, the economy is buoyant. Now that's, that's really what we want. 
Lending rates have averaged 20.2% since interest rates were liberalized in July 1991. The central bank noting that this have reduced significantly to an average of 14.76% as at the end of December 2009. The interbank market provides an insight at the level at which banks can lend at and still remain profitable. If commercial banks can lend to each other at a rate of 2%, the prevailing interbank rate, adding an inflation rate adjustment of 5% and a further 3% to cover for costs and markup, implies that lending rates could be brought down to 10% or even lower. However, at the extreme end of the spectrum are personal loans and lending to small businesses where borrowers are currently paying anything between 17 and 21%, losing out on perceived benefits of apparent reductions in interest rates. Commercial banks have argued that the central bank rate represents short-term credit and should not be expected to translate to longer-term borrowing, with most borrowers allowed up to seven years. Interbank market is a short-term end of the market. Now, the expectation is that uh, uh, when we are doing monetary policy, you are affecting the market from the short-term end. So CBR is a short-term end market, repo rate a short-term end market, and interbank is also short-term. And the three rates tend to move together, right? And the expectation is that the same should be translated to the longer time term element here. Yeah? There are commercial prices, uh, there are consumer prices, there are prices for loans that are secured, there are those that are not secured. And I think it's a really mixed, uh, you know, bag in terms of whatever. So there are some who enjoy very low prices when they are secure and there are those that are not. But the important thing is, is the market able to afford the prices that we are? I think everybody would like a lower price, but it's got to be done responsibly without causing any dislocation within the financial sector. High lending rates provide multiple risks in the economy, one of which is the non-performing loans and subsequent loss of customer deposits. Other challenges include the effect in deterring credit growth and in particular stunting business growth as the repayment cost remains unaffordable to enterprises. When lending rates are too high, businesses are compelled to load higher than necessary markups on their goods and services in order to meet loan repayment obligations. This in turn drives prices upwards and generally creates a high cost production structure in the economy. This reduces competitiveness and lowers demand for goods and services which hampers economic growth and employment creation. In many ways, commercial banks seem to be the problem, appearing too keen to charge exorbitantly, but it turns out that there are a myriad structural problems that keep the cog that could drive economic growth from moving. Banks face costs, both internal and external, that uh, on the face of it don't allow them to, to drop interest rates just because an, uh, 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 an indicator rate has changed. bank needs to price its product against the risk that's involved. But actually when we look over time and monetary policy has been able to do some studies, we find that the margin on bank lending remains around 10%. And this is over many years. And obviously the rate, rate of risk in Kenya and the rate of risk for diff different individuals who are getting different types of credit has been changing. So it's our belief that more work needs to be done to understand the risk so that you can price it correctly. The reality to date is that the current policy framework and tools at the discretion of the CBK have been unable to exert significant influence on lending rates. Since sustainable economic growth and gainful employment creation cannot be attained in an environment of double-digit lending rates, there is then need for policy innovation. When the program returns, reforming the wider financial services sector, the benefit of individual consumers of credit, businesses and the wider economy. That's up next on the other side of this break. Stay with KTN Business Weekly. According to the Central Bank's monthly economic review as at the end of 2009, the only rate as shown on this graph that has significantly dropped over the period January 2007 to December 2009 is the interbank rate or the rate at which banks lend to each other usually overnight. This is despite the significant reduction in the central bank rate. The average interbank rate dropped from 3.11% in November 2009 to 2.95% in December 2009 and 2% currently, implying that while banks have responded to central bank signals, it would appear that the reaction was targeted more at meeting their own needs. But the central bank is optimistic that in the fullness of time, the rest of the credit market will benefit from interest rate reduction. If KTN had need for working capital today, it would go to Bank A 
let's say I need this money, I need 10 billion shillings. Maybe bank A may be saying, at the moment I actually don't have 10 billion. But I can go to bank B and immediately I get the 10 billion, right? And I'm getting it at a very low rate. I don't need to get to the market and mobilize deposits, which could be take long. By the time I advertise and I say that I need all this, it could take long to convince everybody to come in. Which means that if, if interbank rate is at 2%, then uh, bank B or bank A, which is uh, lending to KTN, should be get, is getting a, 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 a loan at a very low cost. So the liquidity cost is taken care of, right? But what would you get as uh, KTN uh, in uh, working capital, which is overdraft facility? You get it uh, over 14%. As argued earlier, given the interbank rate of 2%, an inflation rate of 5.2%, and a presumed markup of 3% that will also cover the bank's own costs, lending rates could be anywhere in the 10% range now, rather than between 17 and 21%, as is currently the case. The rate exists, but is currently accorded to perceived low risk borrowers, the large corporations who borrow at rates ranging between 7 and 9.5% to lure them away from other sources of debt, such as the short term commercial paper and the long debt corporate bonds. The other group that enjoys favorable interest rates in the economy are commercial bank employees who receive preferential interest rates at between 4 and 8 percent per annum. But unfortunately, that is where the theory and practice of reasonably priced credit ends. Lending to small and medium enterprises and personal lending remains highly priced, locking out majority of the population, despite the fact that up to 80 percent of all employment opportunities are in the informal sector, most of them in small and medium enterprises. Given certain things that the government can do and should do, and given certain things that banks can and should do, um, interest rates can come down. And basically it has to do with these costs, these costs that are built into the structure of the system. Uh, and and I, I give you, uh, the first cost is, it has to do with information. I remember going to Indonesia once and we were shown a map of Jakarta and in that map the banks had analyzed the different areas of Jakarta as to where they could lend and how much they could lend. So some areas were seen to be a better risk area than other areas and it's that kind of analysis that I think our banks now need to, to spend more time doing so that they can look at an individual and really understand the risk of that individual and how to price that risk or a corporate. If you want to clean up the credit market, for example, and you want uh, to have a, a rating agency, central bank cannot do as that because that is somebody else's responsibility. The central bank has already licensed the first credit reference bureau and a successful pilot project on credit information sharing concluded with the system expected to go live in the middle of the year. While this is commendable, it is not enough to supplement central bank signals towards a reduction in interest rates. Then there is the prospect of developing the microfinance sector to rope in more people from the informal sector to the formal. On this, the central bank has been consistent in promoting a vibrant microfinance sector, but there is need to inquire and address reasons as to why lending rates for them are still high. I would want to also see, um, and we don't need legislation for this, by the way, um, venture capitalists moving here um, because we have many good ideas, um, many things which could become viable projects, but they lack somebody who can package it into a form that a bank will understand it and be able to assess the, the level of uh, risk involved in it. The central bank has also formed a committee to recommend development banking products that would ease the risk of commercial banks lending long term on short term deposits. Some banks are, are getting uh, into uh, you know, relationship with the foreign uh, uh, development institutions, development finance institutions, and they can get loans that are very low rate. Uh, at the same time, we have um, uh, some of the banks that uh, really uh, are giving some finances to small enterprises. And uh, um, this in itself is a, good, is, is, a, is a good gesture, given that uh, even in the Vision 2030, I think there's a lot of emphasis on the role of small enterprises in growing this economy. Deepening the capital market, specifically the bond market, should offer long-term financing for banks and the bigger higher net worth corporates, further pushing down interest rates.
I think the winners in any financial institution are people who are able to generate deposits at a much lower cost than those that who don't. And these things take time. I think what people have is an anticipation which is unrealistic. Given where we're coming from, given the drought and given the, the, the political violence uh, and, and given the, the uncertainty at the moment, um, in all of that, there are still these efforts being made. Sustainable economic growth cannot be attained in an environment of unaffordable credit. Double-digit interest rates on loans are unaffordable and this makes all goals of economic growth difficult to attain. Reforms are urgently required to ensure that credit is more accessible and more affordable. And that is why KTN Business Weekly must come to a close for this day. Thanks a lot for tuning in and for all your support. As always, we do appreciate your views and suggestions regarding the program. The email address is ktnbizweekly at standardmedia.co.ke. For now, though, do make the best of your week ahead. I'm Larry Mitchell. Good night. Business Weekly, brought to you by KCB. KCB, making the difference.